This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoltenberg, Camp Power, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna test Mercedes EQA 250 Plus. This is upgraded Mercedes with bigger battery, faster charging, new steering wheel, and some other goodies. So what is important in this test is the increased range. So you can see in the back here that it looks like a regular EQA, except for that it says EQA 250. And then, okay, so now at least the GOM claims that we have 405 kilometers of range, so we charge 100%. Supposedly now it has around 74 kilowatt hour gross capacity and 70.5 kilowatt hour net capacity. So we're measuring the battery capacity and also measure the range. So uh, yeah, there, oh yeah, look at that, what is that? Hmm, a nice soul, yeah. Okay, anyway, let's get over to Dahl. Well, now it's okay, I only did Dahl starting position, yeah, as always. So um, I'm going to reset now and we will do the 120 test first. So we see how 94% battery and then we go all the way to Rudshögda and then back again. And hmm, so the car estimates we will arrive with 66%. I estimate we will arrive with 62%. Okay, let's go and see who is right, the man or the machine. All right, we're on the move and uh, hmm, just like the previous gen uh, EQA, this car also feels a bit loud. Ooh, we're on some rough Norwegian asphalt. Let me switch over to the other lane and see if that's been any difference. Uh, no, roughly the same. So uh, yeah, this is what you get when you buy the poor man's Benz. <laughs> okay, let's check the weight. Front axle, 1120. All right, but it's front wheel drive. It should be front heavy. And then the whole car. Wow, this is still heavy, man. What the heck? <laughs> Okay, well, German cars. So today we have uh, mostly dry roads and over here 9 degrees Celsius. Wow, look at the consumption, 233 watt hour per kilometer for such a boxy car. Yeah, but we have tailwind. So uh, now the navigation uh, recalculates and claims 65% initially was 66. So I think it will keep dropping and dropping until 62% maybe. Well, let's see. Uh, see, just like the EQE and the EQB we tried recently, we also have this uh, new charging screen that shows the charging speed potential. So, yeah, now it seems like the, the battery is slightly cold, yeah? so that should uh, heat up during the drive. We are now at the Rudshögda, and uh, the car now predicts 64%. But we actually have 65%. Wow, very impressive. So uh, the car initially estimated we will have it 66 and was almost spot on. I missed, I guessed 62%. So uh, the main reason is that I was guessing 250 watt hour per kilometer. You see that we only have 228 watt hour per kilometer. So this EQA is more efficient than I thought. Oh, wow. When it comes to distance error, it seems like it is spot on. It's supposed to be 91 kilometers and it is 91 over here. So now we turn back. All right, result from the 120 test, 234 watt hour per kilometer. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty good. So now we have 34% left and the car claims 97 kilowatt and you see that the cold battery symbol is gone. All right, let's do the 90 test then. Oh, it's not a raining, so the consumption will be a little bit higher on this run. But uh, yeah, we will just drive a short loop now over to Strandlich and back again. And then this time we have to go to 93 on the speedo, so we're down to 33%. Okay, this car also has the Budimesa sound system. How good is it compared to the Big Brothers? Now let's listen. Oh! Nice! Sounds good, has nice deep bass. Sounds clear also. Okay, next. Skip a little bit here. Oh, I like the bass deep. How is the linearity? Fairly nice and linear, maybe slight in non-linearity, but not much, really. Okay, next song.
quite pleasant to listen to. Impressive, man. For a poor car, a poor man's Mercedes. <laughs> well, I remember that this car cost over 600,000, look, around 60,000 euros. Okay, next. Now listen to some uh, rattling in the doors then. Let me skip it. Like is that? I don't know what the heck is rattling in the trunk, but it's probably not a dead body. Okay, last long. Oh, nice and deep, just the way I like it. It seems like this theory can deal with any music, you know, boomy music or some acoustic. They just handle it quite well, so really pleasant to listen to. And uh, yeah, if I would give it rating, maybe. Well, it just there's just something. It's not it's it's not as good as the EQS, for example. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. But I mean, it sounds sounds really good. Maybe I'll give it an eight. I'll just check something else here. Let's skip a bit. What about clipping then? Okay, skip a bit more. Okay. It doesn't play super loud, but at least it plays fairly loud and uh, I couldn't hear much clipping or distortion at all, even at maximum volume, so... Yeah, two thumbs up! Okay, result from the 90 test, 174 watt hour per kilometer. Hmm, alright, now we're down to 18% and we need to go deeper to measure the battery, but let me show you here the EQ screen here. When we were hammering it in 120 test, uh, it went up and up to 100 kilowatt. Now it dropped. Seems like the battery might be cooling down a bit. So, uh, hmm. But this car has no preheating for fast charging, unlike uh, the, some of the other more expensive uh, Mercedes. So, if you go to, uh, you can go to navigate. Wait, I nine. Stop. How can I help? No, woman. Okay, let me see, I need to go disable that shit. I don't know why it is enabled by default. Settings. Uh, system. Well, oh, here, here, oh, there is my, my bad. Okay, yeah. So, um, all right. Um, but yeah, I can show you. I was going to show you here. If you go to navigation here, and you go here, and you go to the cogwheel, there is no option here for any preheating. See, oh, this is just the root, yeah. And also, if you go back, back, back in the EQ menu here, also no option for preheating here, also no manual preheating. So that's just the way it is. Now we're done with the test. We have turtle mode now, but this is just the yellow turtle. Well, no, that's tortoise, not turtle, okay. And uh, 225 uh, watt hour per kilometer multiplied by this, and we have 2% lead, so that's 70.3 kilowatt hour. According to the spec, it's 70.5 kilowatt hour. So yeah, very good. Now, <laughs> this is also uh, strange. 95 kilowatt. Well, let's see how many kilowatt we get when you plug in then. Huh? What? Okay, are we cold gating? Hmm, we don't get 120 kilowatt. How am I supposed to get it? Maybe I need to hammer harder. Hmm, okay, well, this is the way it is. Even when it's only six degrees Celsius outside, you cannot get maximum speed. Oh, it turns out that I was wrong. I was trusting EV database, which claims 120 kilowatt, but then according to Battle of Sten, which is the importer of Mercedes in Norway, it's 100 kilowatt, and we see today that it was 100 kilowatt. So uh, EV database is correct roughly 90, 95% of the time at least. But yeah, so based on the test today, you see that we get roughly the same uh, uh, consumption as the EQA 250. But then the 250 plus here has a bigger battery, so that's why we get more range. And then, okay, the, the previous test was uh, slightly warmer, but it doesn't seem like we have better efficiency now versus before, at least. But also 404 kilometers of, of winter range does not qualify for going to Hemsedal and back again. Then we need roughly 450 kilometers on this test. So I'm not even going to attempt to go there. Maybe I will go there with um, uh, Cooper Born with a 77 kilowatt hour battery then. 
Yeah, so uh, yeah, so at least now you know the uh, EQA 250 plus. I heard some people are interested in this, so yeah, I mean it has better range, but it it doesn't have much other improvement except for that. Okay, you get the new steering wheel and some new features around the car, but at least the efficiency doesn't have to be. That does not seem to be the same. But also when it comes to charging speed, this is also interesting. The the old EQA peaked at 112 kilowatt. Here we have 102 maybe. And then the charging curve seems to be roughly the same, maybe even worse with the new battery. So even though we have four kilowatt hour more than before, will this be faster or slower in the 1000 kilometer challenge? We're gonna find out in a couple of days, I will do it and then we'll see. Does it pay off to get the new uh, battery or could you try to get the old one? It's kind of funny, right? This uh, is like history, he repeats itself, just like classic Ionic. The smaller battery charge faster than the new one and what else uh yeah i think roughly there so anyway i think that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later